Hello, in this video we're going to be working through some of the data analysis using activity 1.1.4 targeting success using data uh, for PLTW IED. Uh, with this activity, uh, you're going to use a beanbag or penny launcher, whatever launcher you have, and you're going to first set up a target. So you launch it a few times, set up your target, and you're trying to hit where that target center is located. Uh, when you shoot, you're going to measure how far in the left and right direction or the x direction you're off. If it's left, you make your value negative. If it's right, you make your value positive. And you're going to record that into a spreadsheet in your x coordinate. And then you do the same thing forward and backwards. If it's in front of your target, you're going to make a negative value. If it's behind, you're going to make it positive. And you just measure that distance out and record that under the y value in your data table. Uh, so once you've done that, you launch your beanbag, and you set up your table. I already have some data. I got 10 values here. You may have more. I did 10, so you could easily see it all in one spreadsheet. Uh, but we're going to use this 10 data point to do some of the data analysis process. Uh, so we've already launched them. Uh, measuring, you can just do with a ruler tape measure. And then we're going to make a graph so you can see where those launch landing locations are. Uh, so first to make our graph, we're just going to highlight the data in rows B and C. And we're going to hit this chart button. You can also hit insert chart as well, and it's going to give you the same thing, but I'll just hit this chart button. Uh, then it's going to predict what type of graph we want. In this case, we don't want this line graph. So to change our chart type, uh, we can go down and we want a scattered chart or a scattered plot. So I'm going to hit scattered chart. If you don't have that as an option, you can scroll down and it's also down here. And it gives you that same chart type. Uh, once I have my chart type, I'm going to do a little customizing. I don't I want to fix up my title. I ha have good uh, X and Y uh, labels because it's got units on it. But I want to fix up my title and adjust my uh, layout on my graph a little bit. So first, I'm going to customize. I see on the Y axis, I go from negative 10 to 10. And on the x-axis I go from negative 6 to 4. I want to make those consistent both directions uh, so I'm going to change my horizontal axis by hitting horizontal axis and setting my minimum value to negative 10 and my maximum value to 10. Uh, that makes my graph a little more even a little more evenly spread out. Uh, I'm going to continue editing chart and you can change your title under customize chart and axis title or you should be able to double check on double click on it as well. I'm going to change my title to launch landing location from target. That way I know what the graph is actually selling me and how that information is going to be useful. So that's my launch landing from the target so I know exactly how far I am from the target both in the X and Y coordinate. Uh, in this case, my farthest value appears to be a negative 10, and my closest value appears to be uh, closer within. Uh, we may want to add some grid lines. Later on, we'll add these grid lines uh, so we can see exactly where those different values are. Uh, but that's how you create your graph. We will do some more customizing with that graph here in a minute. Uh, so that completes uh, five for us and five and six because it shows us those locations in a graphical format uh, and then seven just sharing that information with your teammates if you have teammates to share it with eight we want to calculate what that distance is from the target of all so if i measure from the center of my target to these landing points uh how far that is in actual real life distance so to do that i'm just going to set up an equation in my spreadsheet so i'm going to type in equals in the cell uh, and if we look back at the equation, it's a square root. So I'm going to start typing square root with an SQ, and it brings up those options. I want to hit the square root. Uh, then if I look back at my equations in, inside parentheses, it says x squared minus x1, x2 minus x1. x1 and y1 in this case is my target, which is 0, 0. So I don't have to worry about that aspect because any number minus 0 is still that same value x2 is my landing distance so i'm going to click on that landing distance after i open the parentheses so i'm going to open the parentheses click on that x value and then the square i do shift six for my uh, carrot top and then two for the exponent uh, then i'll close my parentheses and we look back and we've closed that parentheses so it's plus and now it's just y2 which is my y value squared 
uh, so then plus click on my y value and same process sip six and a two we'll close off our parentheses and hit enter and it calculates that value for us uh, we could go through each and every one of these 10 trials and do that same equation or the easier way is just to click in the cell and then when you come over to the lower right hand corner it makes this cross uh, when it makes that cross you can drag that equation all the way down uh, so now it's calculated that distance for all of these uh trials i've completed and that completes uh step eight for us uh step nine uh is just spot checking so if you marked it down you can check your measurements and make sure they match up to what your equation says in your uh, data table here I want to label that as a uh, distance from target and it's still going to be in the same unit which was inches uh, then we go down to uh, number 10 and it says using a long piece of string uh, we're going to make a circle that's going to fit around all of these uh, markings so to do that uh, if you have your actual target that would be the easiest way you can just look at the target and make a circle around them using a string. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use my graph to help me out. Uh, so I'm going to make some more grid lines so I can see where that center location is. So I'm going to edit chart, I'm going to customize, and I'm going to go down to grid lines. Uh, right now, I go from 0 to 10, so I'm going to do a grid line about every one space. Uh, so major spacing type, I'm, I can set that as 1, and it would put all those grid lines for me. I can do the same thing on horizontal and set that to 1. And I can have a much better idea of where that center of my target's at. at. Uh, so I've set both of those to one. Uh, when I did that, it changed my uh, vertical axis and made it not 10 as a max. So I'm going to set those negative 10 and 10. And now I can see all my coordinates pretty well. So it wants me to estimate where that center of my target's going to be if I want to circle all of these with shortest piece of string possible. Uh, so in this case it looks like it's going to be a little below uh, 0 on my y so between 0 and 1 so maybe like uh, 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 and then when I'm going around it's going to be a little more towards the negative than the positive. Uh, again not all the way to 1 even so I was pretty accurate in my uh, shooting in this case and so I'm going to put it right about here, which gives us a value of on the x of negative 0.4 and on the y, negative 0.6. Again, this is more of an estimate, so we can estimate that value. And then it wants to measure how far that is from my actual target. So I'm going to type in those values. So I said negative 0.4 and negative 0.6 as my points. Uh, the easiest way to do that calculation is to, if I set up in the same grid lines, I can just continue to drag that equation down. I'm going to delete the zero because I don't need it. And now I see my distance from the target. I was off by 0.72 inches, which is a pretty good mark there. Uh, so that's one way of calculating. You could go through and hand calculate using that equation from up, up above, uh, but this is another way you can go about doing that. Uh, then 11, it says create a formula to mathematically determine the center of the launch landing. In this case, it just wants you to calculate the average of your x and y coordinates. Uh, so to do that, I'm just going to type in equals average. It's predicting what I want, B3 through B12. I'm going to click on that and hit enter. Uh, you could type that equation in again on under the y. I'm just going to drag over just like we did above. And we get 0.9 for that one. So negative 0.1 and a positive 0.9 for that. And that gives us that center location for 11. And 12, it wants us to calculate again how far that is from my original target center. So just like I did to get the value down here for 0.72, I can drag that equation down as well to get my value, my distance from the target here. And we end up with a value of 0.9055. Uh, so that gives us that center value for number 12. Uh, 13 just having you compare with other groups. And then 14, uh, use the circle you formed around your launch data point, estimate the precision 
uh, by measuring the diameter of that circle. So now we want the diameter of the circle, and we'll show you a way you can get that diameter of that circle. Uh, so now that we have our new setting point, we know our setting point here is negative 0.1 and a positive 0.9. All I'm going to do is to get my new setting points, I'm going to type in equals, I'm going to click my first value, and then I'm going to type in plus, and then I want that point 0.1. Uh, it's in cell B13. If I just click it, it's going to constantly drag down. So in front of that 13, I want to put a dollar sign. That dollar sign locks us in that row 13. So that lets me drag that equation down. So I hit enter, and that shows me what the difference is in my value. If I move this to point, negative point 0.1, uh, now I'm going to be off by a distance of, I should have subtracted point 0.9. So in this case, it should be 3.1. If I move it over, I'm going to be off by 3.1. Uh, so I'm going to drag that equation down for 10 cells. Since I'm in 18, I'm going to go down to 27. And then I can also drag that equation over. So if I drag it over, I can see I was at 8. I moved my center over to 0 0.9. Now it's only 7.1 away. And then I can also drag that equation all the way down. And that gives me my new center location for each one of these values. Uh, once I've done that, then I can drag my equation down as well. I could retype it in, but since I've already typed it, I'm just going to continue to drag it down. I'll delete these zeros because we don't need them. And now to get the diameter of the circle, I just want to find the largest value and multiply it by 2. So the diameter is going to be my largest value. In this case, is 11.645. And then I multiply that by 2. So I'm just going to come down below and type in equals uh, 2 times shift 8. And then I'm just click on that cell. And I get my diameter of my circle is going to be 23.29 inches uh, for number uh, 14. Uh, 15 uh, just has you looking at your data and figuring out how many, how big that diameter is to fit 25% and then how big that diameter is to fit 50%. So in this case, I had 10, so I want 2 to 3 inside my smaller target and then about half of 5 inside my larger target. So you just look at the distance, how far. How big does that circle have to be? In this case, to get two, it's going to have to be at least to the second point, maybe a little past it. Uh, so I find that point at negative two, three. So I find my negative two and three and see that it's got to be at least 3.6 big, maybe a little bit large in that case. And then the same thing for five. I find that value for five uh, to get my outer circle. Uh, so that's for 15. Uh, and then 16 just has you shorten the, dis the distance data in your spreadsheet. So use that data to sort it. So if you want to, you can sort that data. You can highlight it and sort it using uh, the data sort by once you've highlighted the data. Uh, hopefully this helps you in getting through uh, activity 114. If you have any questions or need any help, let me know. And we'll help get you squared away. Uh, good luck.